Hello, and thank you for your interest in our TV translator services. Today I want to give you some background information that, well, if you understand these principles, it might enhance your TV viewing experience and make it a more pleasant one for you. So I'm going to talk about the difference between standard definition and high definition television, also analog and digital broadcasting, and finally I want to talk about the aspect ratio or the shape of your TV picture and how the old square picture compares to the new widescreen picture that you have on your more modern TVs. So to start out, let's talk about standard definition television. Now, about 30 years ago when I was learning all this stuff, there was no such thing as standard definition television. There was just television. It was either a color or black and white. And uh, all TVs were the same shape, that more square shape that uh, we used to be familiar with and had the same resolution, just larger or smaller screens, but everything was the same. There was just one broadcast standard. Today, there are several broadcast standards. There's multi-channel stereo sound. There are a lot of things out there, and well, you need a new modern TV to process it all. Let's talk about that a little bit. So standard definition TV, Think of it this way. If you look really closely at your computer screen or your TV monitor, get up there super, super close, you can see that what you're really looking at is a bunch of little pixels, little colored squares, different colors and different brightnesses that combined when you step back, start to look like a picture. With standard definition TV, the old standard format, the resolution of the picture was about 640 by 480 pixels. That's about one third of a megapixel if we want to talk about modern digital photography terms. So, you know, not much. So high definition TV came along and there are actually two different resolutions for high definition TV. One is 720 pixels high, 720, and uh, 1280 pixels wide. The other standard for high definition TV is 1080 pixels high and 1920 pixels wide. So as you're looking at high definition TV, sometimes they'll refer to a 720 resolution or a 1080 resolution. That's what they're talking about. Either one of those is considered high definition TV, whereas standard definition is the old 480 pixels. So if you pack in more pixels, like 1920 by 1080, it's gonna make the picture look sharper, clearer, and that's what high definition is all about. All right, so let's set that aside for a moment and let's talk about the difference between analog broadcasting and uh, digital broadcasting. Let's say that the entire broadcast spectrum, all the frequencies that are necessary for radio and TV and cell phones and all that, let's just say it's a big pie, okay? So everybody who wants to use part of that spectrum, they have to apply to the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, to get their piece of that pie. So a radio station is going to need a little sliver of that uh, pie, some frequencies. Uh, another radio station is going to get assigned a different frequency and, you know, the radio stations are all going to get a little piece. TV is going to get uh, a bigger piece. One channel of analog TV needed a, a bigger piece of the pie. So you have several broadcast TV channels in a given market. They each get their little piece of the pie. And it's a different piece so they don't interfere with each other as they broadcast. Well, digital broadcasting, uh, it's a more efficient use of that slice of the pie. So instead of just one standard definition channel in analog that you could fit on that piece of the pie, you can actually fit up to six digital standard definition pictures on that same slice of pie. Or you could put um, you know, a, a high definition signal on part of that slice of pie and still have room for a couple more uh, standard definition channels all there. So this is why uh, back 30 years ago if you turned on channel 2 in Salt Lake City you just have channel 2 but today you have channel 2.1 and channel 2.2. You've got channel 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3. Um, a couple of the stations actually have four channels squeezed in on that same slice of the pie they were using for analog broadcasting. 
So that's why digital broadcasting has, you know, some, some advantages there as far as increased content. All right, so just because it's digital doesn't mean it has to be high definition. There's a mixture on most of the channels you get. So 5.1 is high definition, 5.2 and 5.3 are not. Channel 11 is a good one because channel 11 uses 11.1, that's high definition in the 720 pixels resolution. Channel 11.2 is also high definition, 720. Channel 11.3, however, is standard definition. There was just enough left in that slice of pie to uh, stick in one more standard definition channel on 11. So I hope that makes sense. That's why we have you know, a couple dozen channels up here in the valley because we get these, you know, 0.2 and 0.3 channels on, on most of the ones that, uh, that we're broadcasting. Okay, so now let's talk about um, those different resolutions. See, if I go to the TV I have upstairs and I'm watching uh, the signal is coming from our, uh, you know, our, our translator, there's a display feature on my TV that if I hit the display button, it'll actually show me what the resolution of the picture is that I'm watching. So when I put it on channel 2.1, show the display, it actually has a little designation on the screen that tells me it's a 1080 resolution picture. So that's how I know whether it's high definition or standard definition. Now you'll also see on these TVs, sometimes it's 1080i, 720p. Uh, that gets a little more technical. I'm not going to get into that right now, but that refers to an interlaced picture for the I or a progressive scan picture for the P. I have another video online that kind of explains what all that means. All you need to know is that your TV, if it's a modern digital TV receiver, is uh, required to pick up all those different flavors of video and display them correctly. It has to be able to process the 480, the 720, the 1080, all of that has to be able to be, be processed by your, uh, your TV. Also surround sound and stereo sound, all of that has to be processed by your TV. If your TV doesn't have a, a surround sound setup, then it will automatically down convert all those different channels of audio down to just the two stereo tracks. So uh, your TV is going to take care of all of that. But there's one more problem and that's the shape of the picture. So let's talk about uh, what's called aspect ratios. All right, aspect ratios, uh, well that refers to the ratio between the width and the height of your frame. You can use aspect ratios in photography, in television, uh, if you're painting a picture and you want a frame for that picture. Aspect ratio is a concept that uh, can be used, well, for anything that has a frame. So when it comes to television, back in the old days, the aspect ratio was four by three. So if your TV was four inches wide, three inches tall, you'd have a diagonal uh, of five inch. Your measurement uh, would be five inches. And TVs are sold and, and marketed with the uh, diagonal size being what, what, they, what they market. So in the old days, if you had a 25 inch diagonal TV, then you know the ratio stays the same. So the picture was 20 inches wide and 15 inches tall. And then that diagonal was, was, was 25 inches. And that was a four by three aspect ratio, or we simplify that down to 1.33 to one. The new widescreen TVs have an aspect ratio of 16 by nine. So the 16 by nine aspect ratio is simplified to 1.78 to one. So that's wider than the 1.33 to one that standard definition TV was almost square. It was just a little bit wider than, than square. And the new TVs are most definitely rectangles. So, you know, that, that works out nice. It's almost like a movie theater screen because it's wider like that. And your movies that you're going to watch on DVD or Blu-ray are going to look better on your widescreen TV because it's basically the same aspect ratio as what you see in the movie theater. The problem, however, 
is when you're taking um, something that was made in the widescreen aspect ratio and you want to watch it on your old standard definition monitor. Maybe you have an old standard definition monitor that you use to watch our digital broadcasts with our local TV translator system. And you have a converter box that takes the digital signal and converts it so that it still works with your old TV. That's fine. That's a good way to uh, you know, get your money's worth out of that old TV if your old TV still works. But what happens when you're watching widescreen high definition material that's coming in and it's going to show up on your old TV that doesn't have a wide screen. Well, there are basically three ways to convert that picture to watch it on your more square television screen. Um, the first way is to just crop the picture, cut the sides off. And, um, you know, yeah, you'll miss a little bit of what's on the sides, but, um, you know, it'll fill up your whole screen and, um, you know, you'll pretty much uh, just feel normal. Except for sometimes when the people shoot their widescreen stuff, they don't have your narrow screen TV in mind. So if I had my name up here, you know, Greg Anderson, and uh, we were watching this on a cropped standard definition uh, broadcast, my name would be, you know, Egg Anders. <laughs> You know, just cuts the edges off. So if you don't want the edges cut off, then instead of cropping the picture, you want to set your monitor or your receiver to do a letterbox picture. So what it does is it shrinks the picture down so that you see the entire picture from, from edge to edge on the left and right. But then since there's nothing uh, above and below the frame to kind of fill that up, you just have black bars across the top and the bottom. A lot of people don't like that. They don't want to have the black bars on the top and the bottom. But a lot of people do like that because they know that the picture is not being cut off and they're seeing everything that was in the original picture. The third way to take a widescreen image and show it on a narrow monitor is uh, a squeeze or a stretch. So, um, you know, you just take that wide picture and you just squeeze it in until it fits the square frame. And um, some people like to do it that way. Uh, I think it looks funny though, because you know, you've got people that uh, pe pe people look uh, too tall and skinny and something that's supposed to be round uh, suddenly looks elliptical. It's not quite round anymore. So the tires on a car are all kind of stretched and it looks kind of funny. But so those are the options that you have. And if you're using a, um, a converter box, a lot of times you get into the setup menus and it will ask you, how would you like uh, widescreen material displayed on your old standard definition monitor? And you can choose whether you want it cropped or letterboxed or squeezed. So you've got that option um, to deal with the different aspect ratios of the frames. Now you can also have the opposite problem, which is, what if you have a new widescreen monitor, but some of the stuff you're watching on this is from old standard definition material? So you've got a square frame that you're trying to watch on a monitor that's wider than that. Well, there are several ways to deal with that problem. One is just to leave it the way it was and let there be black bars on the left and right where there was nothing there to begin with. So you see the entire frame, top to bottom, left to right of the original picture, and on the edges you just have black bars. Or sometimes your monitor will allow you to make them gray bars, so maybe they're not as distracting. Okay, that's called pillar boxing, because you know those, those things on the, on the edges are like pillars. Uh, but some people don't like that because they want to fill up the whole frame. So uh, depending on your monitor, you can set it to just zoom in. So it will cut off the top and the bottom of the original frame, but the sides will go out and fill up the entire frame. And so you don't have any black bars on the sides of your screen. And some people like to watch it that way. That's just called zooming in and cropping. Another way to do it is to go ahead and stretch the picture out. So it's the opposite of what we had to do with the standard definition screen. Now we're taking something that was shot square and we're stretching it out. So now everybody looks shorter and fatter than they did uh, in real life. And the wheels on a car are stretched out horizontally. So everything looks a little strange. But some people like that because it fills up the whole frame.
Now you run into something that's even weirder sometimes when you get something that was originally shot in widescreen, then it's being broadcast on a standard definition broadcast, which may have a letterbox effect, and then you bring that into your high definition monitor and you have what's called window boxing, where you have black bars on the top, bottom, and the sides of the picture. And instead of filling up the whole frame, you have the, uh, the, same, the same shape of frame shrunk down in the middle of your TV picture. So um, that's really not desirable, but a lot of TVs will allow you to zoom in on that original image so it will fill up the whole frame. You'll probably be able to tell it's not high definition. You start to lose some of the picture quality, but at least you've filled up the whole frame and you're not looking at a little postage stamp with big borders all the way around it. So, um, if you have noticed while you're watching TV that you have some issues with things being letterboxed or cropped or squeezed or stretched or, or the window box effect and you think, I'd like to be able to change the way this looks, then go into the setup menus on your receiver and look for something called picture size or aspect ratio or aspect and that's where you can choose whichever format looks best for you in trying to display what's coming into your TV uh, onto your TV screen. Now, I happen to have here a couple of, uh, a couple of remote controls from high definition widescreen TVs. And there's a button actually right here on the remote that on this one's labeled picture size. So just on the fly, without going into a menu, you can just push this button and it's either going to stretch the picture or squeeze it in or zoom it in or uh, zoom it out. Uh, you know, there'll, there'll be, depending on the manufacturer, the correct settings will either be called natural or full or zoom or cinema wide. There's a lot of different designations. That's not really standardized. So different manufacturers are going to call that something different. But the bottom line is if something doesn't look right to you, Try to find a button that's marked picture size or aspect or aspect ratio or something like that and push that button until the picture looks like something that you like to see. And then you'll be all set. So again, standard definition versus high definition. Now we're in the digital TV world and we can mix both standard definition and high definition material coming into your TV from the various channels we have. So just because it's digital doesn't mean it's high definition. It could be standard definition, but it'll still look pretty good on your monitor, especially if you use the picture size or aspect ratio adjustment to get it to, uh, to, to look what seems right and comfortable for you. Anyway, that's a lot of technical stuff. I hope that helped out. And the next time you see a button marked picture size or some sort of menu setting for aspect ratio, I hope you'll know what that means. You'll be able to adjust that and be satisfied with the way your TV is set up and with the way you're watching TV. All right, so that's probably enough for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again later.